The second method available to us to find probabilities is the classical method. We're going to use this one and the empirical one a lot. <laughs> so the classical method uses theory and logic, not experimentation. So you don't actually roll the dice, for example. You just kind of look at the dice. You contemplate the die, and you're like, oh, look, I think 5 is 1 out of the 10 sides. Okay, <laughs> so it's 1 out of 10. So it's what we did when we did the dice, and actually the roulette as well. So we didn't actually roll a roulette wheel or spin a roulette wheel. We just kind of looked at it and thought about it, right? So we use this method a lot. So we will use this method for gambling, for games in particular. I don't want to say always because sometimes we will talk about, you know, and then somebody actually rolled this die and saw how many times a nine came up. But um, if you just look at the die and contemplate the die, then you're using logic, right? You're not actually experimenting. So we will frequently use this for games. So by games, I mean dice, coins, roulette wheel, cards, those kinds of things. If I think of more examples, I'll let you know. Okay, so what you do is you take the number of outcomes that are in event E and you divide it by the number of outcomes in the sample space. And this works because in gambling, you're assuming basically everything's equally likely, that it's not that the die is loaded. Although even if the die was loaded, if you knew in what way it was loaded, you can work that out also. So um, they have the same value and they don't really vary. Um, ex empirical probabilities vary from data set to data set, but the classical probabilities do not. The classical probabilities just are what they are. Um, every 10-sided die has the same probability of a 5. It's 1 out of 10, whether it's this die or that die. Whereas an empirical probability, that wouldn't work that way. right? Every data set is slightly different. All right, so let's look at one of the classic ways to use classical probability, which is cards. It was actually one of the ways that um, probabilities were first figured out in the Middle Ages, late Middle Ages, was um, people figuring out how to work with cards and how to play with cards. So um, I know that on your notes they might not be in color, but these suits, this is spades, which is a black suit, right? They literally are black when you look at them. This is hearts which is a red suit. This is clubs, which is a black suit. And this is diamonds, which is a red suit. This is also, oops, I had a little dyslexia there. Um, this is also in the exam notes packet generally, because not everybody knows the deck of cards, so it is included in the exam notes packet. So that's diamonds. Okay, so we are going to find the probabilities as unreduced fractions. So this is a standard 52 card deck. Um, I went through the suits, those are called suits. Suits and the colors are right there. Okay. This is the ace, two, three, four, five. I mean, they say what they are, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the jack, this is the queen. And this is the king. Jacks actually used to be called knaves until cards made their way across to America. Americans were like, eh, let's not call this knaves. <laughs> that seems weird. Let's call it jacks. So um, as in a jack of all trades. So that's where it got this name. Um, over in Europe, where they were originally um, be hit popularity. They're not actually originally from Europe. They're originally from China. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> there you have it. Okay, so we want to find the probability, because remember capital P stands for probability. So whenever you see a P with a parenthesis, it's saying find the probability of, da, 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 right? And then what's ever in that parenthesis. So find the probability of the nine of diamonds. Well, the nine of diamonds is right here. It is one card out of the 52 cards total, because there's 13 times four, so 52. So it's one out of 52. And it's said to leave things as unreduced fractions. In other words, I'm not going to sit here and try to reduce them, although 1 over 52 does not reduce anyway. All right, now what about a black card? 
Well, there's 13 plus 13 more, which is 26. So 26 out of 52. Or some people just know, oh, that's a half, right? Half the deck is black. Fair enough. All right, now aces. There's four aces, so the probability of an ace is 4 over 52. Now face cards. The face cards are kings, queens, and jacks because they have faces on them. Literally, there's noses and eyes and things. So there's 4, 8, 12. There's 12 out of 52. 12 of the 52 cards are face cards. All right, now we're going to get a little sneaky. What about a red spade? Well, spades are black, so the chances of a red spade is zero. It's never going to happen. This is an impossible event, which is what I meant right here, down below. An impossible event is an event with a probability that is equal to zero. Now, if aces are low and kings are high, the probability of pulling an ace card or higher would be all 52 cards, which is 1, which is 100%, which is a certain event. An event that's definitely going to happen has a probability equal to 1 or 100%. And while I'm on the subject, before I go back up, an unusual event we learned in Chapter 3. We first saw this in Chapter 3. That unusual events are events that have a probability less than 0 0.05, which is 5%. 5% .05. Right, is 0 0.05. Now, all these probabilities are classical because I didn't actually grab a deck of cards and draw, right? We didn't play with them. We just used logic. We look at the deck and kind of imagine how it would be. That's logic. There, I just wrote that up. So we did not play with the deck of cards. We just looked at the deck and found the values with logic. Um, also, just on a side note, we assumed that every card was equally likely which is kind of a classic piece of, no, no pun intended, of classical probabilities, that you assume that each outcome, each simple outcome, is equally likely. And that nobody's, you know, rigged the deck with more kings than required or something like that. And you're not playing against, I don't know, a card sharp or something, <laughs> somebody who can um, cheat. These definitions down here will be ones that you'll run into many, many times. So you'll want to think about them. All right, now what about a probability distribution? Or probability model? We can see that there are two rules that all probability models must, must work with right here. Right. Number one is that the probabilities of every event, any event, um, must be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. In other words, every probability you find has to be between zero and one. Right? It can be as low as zero, it can be as high as one, but that's it. Right? All probabilities can never be negative. In other words, um, never have a negative probability. Right? Negative probabilities are impossible. Never, never, never can you have a negative probability. And then the sum of all the probabilities must equal 1. right? So when you total the probabilities, so the sum is the total. The total of the probabilities must equal 1. That's what that's saying. Which makes a certain kind of sense. I mean, you have to have all the outcomes accounted for. Sum, aka okay, the total. All right, and a probability model is just any model that lists out those outcomes and the probabilities. Simple as that. So we need to look at the following pr 
probability models and determine whether or not they're valid. Valid means do they abide by the two rules. Right? That's what you want to figure out. Okay, so looking at our first one, we don't care if the payouts are negative. That doesn't matter. What matters is the probabilities. So when I look at those probabilities, I can see none of them are negative. So rule number one is okay, right? So all my probabilities, I mean, I guess I can write it out. All the probabilities are not negative, right? There's no negative probabilities. Probabilities, my goodness messing that probabilities there we go and let's find the sum the sum of the probabilities is and that will have to go check with a calculator so let me go grab Desmos all right Desmos so 0 0.35 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.15 one five there we go <laughs> got to be careful when you type it is in fact one so we're good. Some of the probabilities is one. So this is a valid probability model. So the first one is valid. All right, the second one. I see no negative probabilities, so that's good. No negative probabilities. There, I spelled it correctly there. Now the sum. All right, we'll have to check that sum. So I'm going to go over here. And it really has to be one right on the dot. There's no issue with rounding error on these ones because these are not empirical probabilities. These are classical, essentially. No, 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 no. That is not close enough. Nope. It needs to be one. Exactly. So the sum of the probabilities right down here, the sum was one. Over here, the sum was 1.1. No, that's not good enough. Sum of probabilities must equal one exactly. Unless you're dealing with empirical probabilities, and that's only because of rounding error. So if it's 1.1, that is no good. All right, now what about down here? Well, I can actually see I'm already in trouble. That has a negative attached to it. So this is not a valid probability because there's a probability model because there's a negative probability and we're done. We don't have to check anything more. I can spell my words correctly. And I added in a little note here just to remind ourselves, for the problem like this, they must sum to one exactly. We're willing to accept a small amount of rounding error when it's a problem from a table with real data and things like that. So like this, that was just a rounding error, but that's because we had real data. So when we did that, we rounded and that created the problem for us. But over here, because these are just given to us from the statistics gods, <laughs> we will have to accept that they are what they are and therefore they must equal one exactly. There's no rounding error allowed in these ones.